Our community is struggling because our people are becoming elders. A lot of the kids are uh, becoming of age where uh, they're going to high school now, so they'd like to go up to either Alaska, Sitka, or Anchorage to uh, get a higher education, which is good, but not good for us to lose them. Arnold Dushkin is president of the Village Council in Nikolsky, Alaska. And nowadays they call it the president, before they call it the chief. Dushkin oversees this village of just 30 people in the Aleutian Islands. It is one of the most remote locations in the United States, and it's a village on the verge of collapse. I live here with um, my Uncle Scott, my Aunt Agathena, we uh, have a little house over there. <laughs> my dream is to become an aviator, like my brother. 13-year-old Eric Wilhite has spent most of his life in Nikolsky. His bloodline goes back more than 8,000 years to the Unangan people who stopped here after crossing the Bering Land Bridge. There he is. This is my brother, Daniel. He's a good pilot. He's a very good pilot. He got his pilot's license, private pilot's license, and instrument rating all at the same time. But unlike his forebears who stayed to hunt ducks and seals, Eric longs to fly airplanes. He would like to attend a boarding school in central Alaska, but to get there, he needs good grades this school year. But there's a problem. This is the entire student body of the Nikolsky School. Under state law, the school here needs 10 students to stay open. This year, they came up short. And Nikolsky is now at a tipping point that may have devastating consequences for Eric and the village. This year, at the current time, we have nine students that are present here in Nikolsky. And it puts us into the situation where we can no longer afford to staff the school with a teacher given the reductions in funding. Um, Calvert curriculum, they actually offer curriculum. Nikolsky is one of at least 35 schools in Alaska at risk of closing. The loss of a teacher has forced the district's superintendent, Joe Beckford, to establish a homeschooling correspondence course. You, um, on a daily basis, basically, and then you would just follow those lesson plans. Concerned residents like Scott Kerr, Eric's uncle, are incredulous that the school will have no teacher. There must be an emergency yeah. fund. Mm -hmm. We can't shake a money tree, or our, rep our district representative can't shake a money tree through the state, through Juneau. But the state won't rescue the school. And so all the parents here are stuck wondering what to do. For Eric, who had poor grades last year, Fish. a teacher is key to helping him stay focused. This was a crucial year for Eric. And things aren't going well. I wish we had had a heads up that this was going to happen. We knew the school was in dire straits, but we were informed that it would be open for the first semester. Greg Krukoff and his son Ivan are fishing buddies. Well, the homeschool, I'm going to have to do that in the evening time with him, because I'm not going to be home. Ivan lived in Dutch Harbor with his mother, but was brought here by Greg to help keep the school open. Now, without a teacher, Greg isn't sure he can homeschool his son. It's going to be hard. There's a lot of things I forgot already, <laughs> especially on the math. And Rachel didn't want Grace to. Umatuk is a mother of three children, two of whom attend Nikolsky School. Grace works as a health aide in the village. I know Aleutian Region School District is trying. I know they're trying their best, and, but I think they could have tried a little bit harder. When we, when we first got here, it's, it's nice. It's, everything goes smooth. We like this. And then there is Maria and Yuki Ialualo. Originally from Samoa, the couple and their five children were brought here from Seattle by the school district to help the school's student count. But things have turned against them. It's not good for, for my kids to 
having homeschool because I don't have experience. I have a lot of kids to keep the school going, but I wish I can get more kids. <laughs> As in many small, isolated places like Nikolsky, the school is critical to the community. It's where people gather to discuss village life and where the dreams of the young are nurtured. This is a widgeon, um, I'm guessing model 102. Iron spikes, more like protect, protective guard. Um, 455 engines. And that school is our main uh, reason for you know, the village to be going. The migration from rural villages to urban centers in Alaska has been accelerating. Dutch Harbor, an hour's flight away, has long been a draw for young people from places like Nikolsky. People like Darren Krukoff, who came to Dutch Harbor from Nikolsky last year. Darren left because he wanted to learn a trade and because village life had lost its appeal. A lot of my friends are leaving. Yeah. And it started getting boring, nothing to do. Usually we always used to go play football or go on on a ride or something. But, you know, it all started to change. Darren could have been Nikolsky's 10th student, keeping the school open. But Joe Beckford's efforts to persuade him to return failed. Darren Krukoff, we were best buds, and um, well, we used to fish, drive bikes, play games, BS, you know, kayak. The situation in Nikolsky is already dire. And people don't know it yet, but everything is about to get worse. They, they, they don't know we're going to leave. There's nobody knows where we're leaving to. Another month, and that's it. I was thinking about one more month, then I'm going to be out of here. Grace says that if things don't work out, she'll soon take her three children back to the mainland. Greg says he wants to put Yvonne back in school in Dutch Harbor. That would leave just one child here in Nikolsky, a 13-year-old boy struggling in a small, isolated village with no teacher. A boy with big dreams of flying away like his older brother.